Hello my dear student, I am your mentor Shikha, brought to you another video from course book for class 8, New Broadway. Question number 1 from the part, learn to read, understand, the pace of life in Agra is. Some options for this question have been given here, we have to choose the right option. The options are really slow, hectic or without hurry. So the pace of life or the speed of life in Agra is without hurry. Everybody is moving very slowly. Question number two, match the description of Yamuna with the appropriate places. Cold and blue that is used for foothills near Kalsi. Generally calm that Yamuna remains in the plains of Uttar Pradesh. Muddy banks are found at Delhi and alive with huge turtles in Yamuna that we found in Mathura. Next question, give reasons for each of the statements. First statement, the cycle rickshaw is the best way of getting about in Agra. The answer is the cycle rickshaw is the best way to get about Agra because its smooth progress and leisurely pace keeps in line with the slow pace of life in the city of Agra. So, the life in Agra is really slow and the rickshaw ride is compatible with the life of Agra. Next statement, the subject of kite makers and kite flyers boards the rickshaw boy. The answer is kite flying and uh, by association kite making are activities that have lost their novelty for the rickshaw boy as he sees the kites every single day and has been seeing them for years. We can relate this question with our daily life. Whatever the work we are doing in daily life, we became habitual uh, of doing those works. And uh, there is nothing much special that attracts our attention, that comes our routine. Same as the rickshaw boy uh, become habitual of looking at so many kites every day. And uh, that's why he was not interested to talk about more about the kites. Next statement, the writer stands with averted eyes in front of the Taj. We have to tell the reason of it. The answer is the white marble for the Taj Mahal with its domes reflects the noon sunlight quite brightly, creating too much glare for the author to look directly at it, so forcing him to avert his eyes. It is difficult for us as well because whatever the object we are standing in front, if uh, it shines and reflects the sunlight, so it will be very difficult to keep your eyes open. And the same was with the author. Next statement, the gardener's son comes to the Taj every day. The answer is the gardener's son comes to the garden to help his father and to eat the fruits of Ashoka tree. So this was the reason of his arrival every day to Taj. Statement number E, Bernier in his description of the Taj said, nothing offends the eyes. We have to tell the reason of this writing. The answer is, Bernier wrote that he found every corner of the Taj has a peculiar beauty that could only be achieved through a skillful construction. Bernier said so because each and every part and corner of the Taj was carved very efficiently and keeping this as a fact we cannot say that this particular part is more beautiful than the other part means the complete building was really skillfully constructed moving to next question number four answer the following questions briefly question number a what does the author learn about kite flying in Agra. Bond learned that kite flying is an extremely common hobby sport in Agra in which every second person is taking part every day or on holidays. On every Sunday kite flying competitions are held and it attracts heavy batting means kite flying was the part of a life for the natives of Agra and, and they became habitual to include it in their daily routine. Moving to next question, what is that the gardener's son finds interesting when he sees the Taj every day? The answer is the gardener's son has little interest in the Taj. He is fascinated by the different people who come to visit it every day. People from every country, both rich and poor, sometimes president and prime ministers, queens come to see the Taj. Again, Taj was the daily site for the gardener's son and what exactly he was interested in to look at different different people who come from different parts of the country. 
question number C describe the Taj based on the text you have just read this question asks about the individual opinion so the answer may vary the Taj Mahal is strikingly beautiful it is surrounded by gardens and is enclosed by a red sandstone wall it is constructed of white marble jade jasper lapis lazuli stones are embedded into the marble that makes for a striking overall design these lines describe the beauty of the building so if you need increase the limit of your answer you can just describe about all the characters that uh, have been described in this chapter and about the visitors as well who visit uh, the Taj and praise it in their own words Moving to the question from the part in four, question number five. When you see something every day, even if it is something remarkable, you don't feel excited about it. Can you identify two instances of this fact in the text? The answer is the rickshaw boy who found a number of kites flying in the cloudless sky, found uninterested to talk about it, and the gardener's son remarked to the author that seeing it once or hundred times is the same. Are two examples that even remarkable things can seem ordinary when seen every day. If the same question is asked you, then uh, you must talk about your school timetable, your daily routine of your self studies, and you will definitely uh, not show any interest in these work because you have to go through with these things every day in your life. Moving to question number six, Ruskin Bond was certainly impressed by the magnificent Taj, but he was also struck by some other things during his trip. What were they? What do you learn about the writer from them? Two parts of this uh, question and the answer also in two parts. The author noticed the slow paced life in Agra. He found numerous kites in the sky fascinating. As he surveyed the Taj, he was captivated by the vision of Yamuna River flowing past it and parrots, kingfishers and peacocks that could be seen there. The author writes about all this. Months later, besides the Taj, he remembers the flowing Yamuna and the tangy taste of Ashoka tree. We learn from this uh, that the author is very perceptive of surroundings and bounty of nature. Besides this, some lines you can write about that uh, you um, come to know about the city Agra first time through this chapter or you uh, always try to find something new and one of the hunt that you um, got here was about the fruits of the Ashoka tree. Reflect is the part that is having the question number seven. Life in big cities is very busy and rushed. The leisurely pace of smaller towns provide opportunities for simpler joy. Can you think of some hobbies or interests that you would like to pursue if you had the time and space for it? This question is absolutely asking your interest, so you can answer in your own words. Some of the following can be discussed, like learning new languages, learning how to play a musical instrument, learning how to cook new dishes that belong to a different culture, etc. You can add on your any one interest and uh, elaborate it to complete the answer. Next question, we have all undertaken trips to places for sightseeing. When we visit such places, we often have interesting experiences with people whom we chance to meet there. Share one such experience that you had. Please share your own experience as the answer of this question. The following points to be kept in mind while answering, like uh, whatever the place you have visited, the name of that place, the name of the person you met over that place, their age, professions, and the conversations took place between uh, you both. Besides these things, you can also talk about uh, the food and the ride you experienced there. Next question is from the grammar. Under the part, learn words, compound words. Question number one, make compound words by selecting a word in A and finding a word in B to go with it. Uh, here, the compound words have not been matched. We have to find the sweet table match to form a compound word. It has been done for you. You can go through it. 
Question number two is also from the same part, compound words. Fill in the blanks with the sweet table compound words. The first part of the compound word has been given in brackets. Some sentences with the blank and uh, the word to be filled uh, after uh, choosing the sweet table compound word has to be done by you. Carefully go through with each and every sentence and find the compound words. Moving to the next question, match the hyphenated adjectives with their meanings. In column A, some hyphenated adjective means the compound words has been given and we have to match with the suitable meaning of these hyphenated adjectives. The first one is level-headed, that means calm and sensible. Half-hearted, it's called not really interested. Tight-lipped means unwilling to give the information. Broken-hearted is called crushed by grief or sorrow and tight fisted is called stingy it means miserly means the person who is not ready to spend the money easily next part b is collocation collocation means we can say the combination of the words uh, that is used in the language and very common in that use means with a particular work we are using a particular type of co-word or compound word. So in this question, some nouns have been given. In front of each of them, we have to place the adjective or adjectives front the list given earlier that can be used to describe them. One is already done here, like immense pleasure. Means with pleasure, we uh, most of the time we use immense. So uh, we have to choose from the box that is given. So uh, the word that we have made are tarring height, large house, exorbitant Exorbitant fees means very expensive, enormous building, huge personality, vast improvement, massive trees, large family and large back. Next question is from the part learner spellings. Insert IE or EI in these words means uh, some words have been given with the blanks and we have to complete the spelling of those words by putting IE or EI. These are very confusing but uh, after completing this question, we will definitely remove the confusion we have in these words. Go through this question to complete the words. Till now we have completed the compound words but in this part learn grammar we have to make the compound sentences means two part of the sentences has been given separately means one part is complete sentence we have to join those two sentences to form one sentence with the use of a compound words so we have to combine the following pairs of sentences using an appropriate connecting words from the list given below the first one is Ravi was ill he did not come to a school means there was a reason so we'll connect these two uh, sentences with the help of compound words so in next sentence we uh, should use or as a connecting word because first sentence is saying you should get your license renewed at once or you have to pay the fine means this is a choice either of the choice you have to complete and accept next is there is no demand for this type of grammar uh, book so i cannot place an order of this book means first part is the reason of not doing the action and that is given in the second part next is my grandfather neither flown in an aeroplane nor does he want to fly in one means both of the part or sentences we uh, have to join with the connecting words neither and nor because there were uh, two conditions that uh, grandfather does not want to do next question i have been working all day so i am very tired means uh, what is the reason of the tiredness of mine means uh, the complete day exhaustion that's why we have used the connecting words so the enemy captured the town and they destroyed several factories and buildings means uh, both of the sentences have the equal proportion uh, first part is done by the enemy and the second part was the result of the action of the first sentence the last sentence she not only gave us a fine dinner but also drove us back home Whenever we are completing two tasks at a time, we always join those sentences with the help of connecting words, not only but also. 
and these words will be used at the place like in this sentences two actions has been done by the same person so first part of the this connecting word not only will be placed before the first action and the second part of this connecting word but also will be placed before the second action Christopher Colombo who was an uh, Italian explorer and navigator uh, some incident from his life has been given here and we have to complete uh, all these sentences by filling uh, the sentences that has been already given by using the participle and in most of the sentences we are using present participle so let's see it done the last question from the textual part of this chapter is participle phrases phrases are the group of words and participle are the words that is formed from the uh, form of different form of the words like second form third form and uh, ing form second form is called participle third form is called past participle and ing form of a verb is called present participle so some sentences have been given related to one of the person and we have to combine two sentences or we have to use the present participle means most of the sentences will be framed through present participle means we have to place ing form of the verb to complete those sentences what the question says let's look at it a short account of the life of christopher columbus complete it by filling in the blanks by suitable participle phrases so uh, some uh, incident of uh, christopher columbus first sentence is he had not gone to a school and we have to complete this sentence that has been already done not having gone to a school he did not learn to read and write in his childhood next sentence he was in love with the sea this sentence we'll start uh, by using the present participle and we place this present participle or ing form in the form be and the sentence will be being in love with the sea he wrote that as soon as he he was old enough he would go to sea he became a sailor in his early teens next sentence he traveled to greece and portugal how we will make by using present participle that is traveling to greece and portugal so uh, in the main verb travel we have put ing and make it a present participle Sentence number four: He pored over books and maps in his brother's book store. The main verb is pore, and by using this verb and bringing it in the uh, beginning of the sentence, we'll put ing and make it present participle and complete the sentence like pouring over books and maps in his brother's no book store. He taught himself all about navigation. Sentence number five: He was inspired by Marco Polo's accounts of his journey to. Asia. Now here, the helping verb uh, was, or the auxiliary uh, verb was, has been given. And who is the origin verb of was? That is be. So we will place ing in the verb be, and the sentence will be being inspired by Marco Polo's accounts of his journey to Asia. He persuaded the king of Spain to pay his voyage with ninety crewmen. He sailed in nine fourteen ninety two. Sentence number six. He believed that he would find gold and spices in the Indies. Now here, uh, no auxiliary verb is given. So uh, one main verb believed has already been given. And if we have to start the sentence from this main verb, we have to put ing. And with this participle, uh, present participle, we'll use the sentence like believing that he would find gold and spices in the Indies. He may. I uh, have never found the Indies, but the last sentence: He sailed across five thousand miles of ocean without an accurate map or compass. Here again, the main verb "sailed" uh, has been given here, but "sailing across" it's better to be used like having sailed across five thousand miles of oceans without an accurate map or compass. He reached the West Indies, nevertheless, which was itself no means achievement. 
or we can also start the sentence like sailing across 5000 miles of ocean so it is clear if the auxiliary verb like is am are was these are given then we can start the sentence so by using the present participle by putting ing in b means the sentence will start from being or having and if the main verb is given and if the uh, if it is suitable to start the sentence by putting ing in that main verb then we can start the sentence by putting present participle in that main verb i hope this all grammatical part is clear to you you need to practice the sentences uh, uh, more sentences like this to get flair in this with this we have completed all the textual part for footloose in agra i'll see you with the next video with the next chapter